Hey, what's going on YouTube? So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to use frequency separation in order to make your edits look a lot more realistic. Um, one thing that I've struggled with in the past and I see other strugg photographers struggle with is having images that look way over edited and frequency separation is the way that you're going to fix that. So let me walk you through how it works, how you edit with it, and then I'll walk you through how to create an action for it so that you can, with one click, set up frequency separation so that your edits can happen much faster. So let's go ahead and get started. Oh, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe because I make tons of videos like these. Okay, so now I'm in Photoshop. I wanna show you guys the difference between using frequency separation and then using something like a mixer brush or um, just editing directly on top of without separating the textures and colors. And so here I've got, this is where I use the mixer brush um, and just went in quickly and edited things. And you can see here, the skin is cleaned up relatively nicely, right? You've got, you know, the skin's softened up here. It's softened here all the way really around. I didn't spend any time like going down into the body, but just really focus on the face here. But the problem is, is that there's just no text, right? You can even see where the it's blurred out there, right? All the natural pores that occur in our skin are just, they're just, they're just not present. And you know, this is okay when you first start out, but if you really want to up your game, you, you want to be able to show what natural skin looks like, even with, you know, depth, in-depth retouching. This is the final, the final image um, that has frequency separation included, right? You can still see all the pores um, within the skin here. And so the skin looks natural. This is what the human face looks like, right? And then the colors themselves are kind of smoothed out. So it looks rich and clean. And that's what we're trying to achieve by using frequency separation. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to do frequency separation. And we're going to create an action to automate these steps every time you open a new image. Let me show you how. So first things first, we're gonna go, go to your window panel at the top and make sure that actions is turned on. That way you have a list of all the actions that you have. You may not have this long list, which is okay, but we're gonna add one now. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click this button here for create new action, and we're gonna name it. I'm gonna name it FS Tutorial. You can name it Frequency Separation. I'm gonna make that, and you can see here this red dot automatically started recording. That means that everything that we do in Photoshop until we hit stop, is going to record, which is perfect, exactly what we want. First things first, we're gonna create two background layers. We're gonna hit Control J and Control J or Command J on a Mac. And I'm gonna double tap the top layer. We're gonna make that the textures layer. I'm gonna double tap the layer one. We're gonna make that colors. Again, that's what we're doing. We're se separating the colors from the textures. Now, we're gonna go into the colors here we're going to add a filter so click filter at the top here and then go down to noise and then you're going to click dust and scratches all right and you can see it defaulted to four because that's typically what i use um you can click anywhere within the um within the image and this is going to tell you how much more or less blurriness you're going to incorporate into the image as you can see here's what one looks like Here's what two looks like. And we really want to get it to a point where you can still see the color differences, but then the texture itself is kind of gone. And then for me, it's about four, right? Four works for me. And this is how much detail is there is based on the megapixels in which you're shooting. So it may not be exactly four for you, but you want to make sure that um, you can still see, you know, like the different eyelashes in the, in the, in the image. And maybe just right about there is where you want to be. I'm going to click OK. Good, select the textures layer and we're going to click image at the top left and we're gonna click apply image. Once we're there, make sure your settings look like mine. Layer, we're gonna select colors, RGB. For blending mode, we're gonna subtract. And then for scale, we want to offset 128, opacity 100% and leave these unchecked. Once you're done with that, we're gonna click okay. Now we need to change the blend mode for this layer. We're gonna click this blend mode option here and we're gonna change it to linear light. So if you did this correctly, the image itself should look like the original, which is great. 
Now we're gonna select both the texture and the colors layer. I'm gonna hold shift and click on colors to select them both. I'm gonna press control or command G and that's gonna group those into one group. We're gonna rename that by double tapping on the name and we're gonna type in frequency separation and hit enter. Now, you could stop there, right? Because now the action is created, but from a workflow standpoint, when you open a new image, for me, frequency separation is the first thing that I do, and I want to select the color layer, and I want the mixer brush to be selected as well. And so I'm gonna open this layer. I'm gonna select the colors layer, because that's gonna be the layer that I work on first every single time. And then I wanna make sure that I go and select my mixer brush. Now for me, it's complicated because I already have it selected. So I'm gonna select the brush tool and then I'm gonna select the mixer brush again, just to make sure that at the end of this action, I'm on the color layer and my mixer brush is selected and then I can hit stop. Now, what you see here, we've got the FS tutorial. It's got all the steps that we just did here but I don't even like working out of this mode. I like the, to be in button mode for my action. So I'm gonna click this hamburger icon up here. I'm gonna click button mode. Now we're gonna simulate what we just did so that you can see how it works. I'm gonna delete this out. Now, what do you see? We have a background layer. When I open this image from Lightroom, this is where I'll be. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open my actions. I'm gonna click FS tutorials, the action that we just created. And it's gonna do all of that. It's gonna select colors. We got the mixer brush and everything's already done. And so once I'm here, I can select, you know, my brush and then get to brushing. So um, these are the settings that I typically use. I've got my flow at 51%. Um, I usually do about 25%, anywhere between 20 and 30 is good. Um, but I'm gonna do 35 just because I wanna do this much more quickly um, during this tutorial. And then you really want to focus on the areas that kind of go from light to dark because we're going to smooth out the colors where they are and then smooth out the transitions of those colors as well. And so if you got the forehead here, I'm going to just I'm just going to start painting on here. And basically what the mixer brush does is it takes the color that you select as long as you make sure that you don't have um, this selected, just have this one selected where it it basically resets the brush every time you unclick, every time you release the click button. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna paint some of this. And honestly, um, this process can happen really quickly, which is, which is fortunate because a lot of times, you know, you you have a bunch of photos that you want to edit, and even if you're not going as detailed as like, you know, dodging and burning, where you're really doing some in-depth, in-depth editing, if you want. <clears throat> Um, to really get in there. But for these, I mean, if you've got 15 or 20 photos to edit and you want to do them quickly, you want them to look clean and professional, then, you know, frequency separation by itself um, should be pretty good. Um, I will say though, the best investment you can do when it comes to time and it comes to editing is going to be in makeup there. I mean, Yes, I mean, you can retouch and you can clean it up or whatever, and, and it, it does take time. But if you have a good makeup artist who does good makeup on, you know, whatever image that it, or whatever subject you're working with, then it just it just really makes a difference in how much work you have to do. And then overall, what that that final image looks like. like I've done shoots with, you know, poor makeup and it's just like, oh, God, the amount of time it takes. To, to clean it up and just even what the final product looks like looks like even if you spend time editing it is just um it's just not worth it like you really you really don't want to oh just so you guys know um hold alt on the keyboard right click and you can select the size of your mouth of your cursor of your brush and then you can go up and down to select the hardness i like a really soft brush and i change the size based on you know where i'm where i'm mixing in but kind of work through some of this. But yeah, guys, use a makeup artist. Um, makeup artists are huge. I, I typically tell my clients they have to use some kind of makeup artist. If I mean, if they do their own makeup, it just has to it has to be really good because I, I really don't like spending a ton of time cleaning up what could have been prevented had we had a good makeup artist. Um, there we go. And just like that, in all of 
what, just like a few, maybe a minute or so, minute and a half, we've got this image that looks just so much better. It's clean, but then you've still got the textures off up in here. Now, if you want to clean up some of these blemishes, you want to get your clone still uh, clone stamp tool or S on the keyboard and click somewhere on the on the on the photo and you can clean some of that up um, and just kind of touch it in places where you know it's a little more than you want you can just you know touch on some of those make sure you do that on the texture layer that's why we separate the two and yeah just like that um frequency separation to save the day so hopefully this was helpful again use this action whenever you're editing open up the image click it do it save it and it's done so if this was helpful leave a thumbs up um and then subscribe because i'm trying to make more videos like these i've also got videos showing you how i do my photo shoots um how to use off camera flash and everything photography so uh thank you all for watching and i'll see you on the next video